Number 33, professional application. Using mass and speed data from example 8.1 and assuming the football player catches the ball with his feet off the ground with both of them moving horizontally, calculate letter A, the final velocity if the ball and player are going in the same direction. So example 8.1 is on the upper right. Here we have the football player 110 kilograms traveling at eight uh, meters per second. And the football is 0.41 kilograms uh, traveling at 25 meters per second. So now I have my uh, picture over here on the left hand side and it tells us that they are moving in both uh, the same direction and therefore we have to find the final velocity. Okay, So you have to think about right the nature of the question. Football is being thrown at a uh, football player and eventually a football player is going to catch it, right? So, well hopefully at least. And uh, that would be an example of a collision, right? The football is coming in contact with the uh, football player. Notice the velocity of the football is greater than the velocity of the player. So therefore it should catch up to the player eventually. Um, and then you want to think, well, what type of a collision would this be? Elastic or inelastic? And since the player will catch the ball and assuming hold on to it, uh, it would be an example of an inelastic collision. So therefore, we will create now our conservation of momentum formula for inelastic collisions. Okay, so we can uh, start by doing the momentum before the collision should equal the momentum after. And before the collision, the objects are separate, right? So therefore, I would have the momentum of the first object, the football, plus right the momentum of the second object, which is the football player, shall equal then the momentum after the collision. And basically, I'll call it the total momentum because now both objects will be stuck together. Expanding on the momentum, so remember momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So I can say it's the mass of the first object multiplied by the velocity of the first object plus the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of the second object is then equal to the total mass multiplied by the final velocity. Okay, so I basically have what I need. All right, I know the masses of the football and of the player. I know the velocity of the football, the velocity of the player, and then I also know their total mass together. All right, so to solve for the final velocity here, just thinking about a little math, this is simple. Divide by the total mass, okay? Divide by the total mass. And we come up with a nice formula over here, m1v1 plus m2v2 all over the total mass, or in other words, m1 plus m2. And there's the formula. All we got to do, plug it on in. So the first object was the football, so we have 0 0.410, oops, 0 0.410 multiplied by its velocity of 25 meters per second. Positive because I show the uh, football and the football player moving on the right uh, to the right hand side. So the mass of the uh, football player was 110 kilograms. His velocity is uh, 0 0.8, uh, excuse me, 8, and then divide that by the total mass of so 0.410 plus then 110. And that'll equal the final velocity. So let's just throw it on into the calculator. So we got 0 0.41 times 25 plus 110 times 8. And then divide that by parentheses now, 0.41 plus 110, close those parentheses. And there it is. We get 8.06. Okay, so 8.06. And that is in terms of meters per second. So that would be the final velocity. Okay, so that's letter A. Take a look at letter B. And letter B now says, um, so, right, so now we have to calculate the loss of kinetic energy in this case. Okay, so uh, whenever we're talking about trying to find the loss of something, a good, a good formula to use is we can say something like this, that the kinetic energy lost, or the item that we're trying to calculate being lost, should be equal to the value we had initially, Right, the kinetic energy initially uh, minus then the kinetic energy finally. Right, so that should be pretty straightforward. I mean, pretend like you you went to a casino and you had to figure out how much money you lost. How much money did you start with? How much money did you end with? If you started with a hundred and you ended up with eighty, then you lost twenty. Right, so that should formula should make sense. Okay. So now um, let's just expand on these terms a little bit. So the kinetic energy lost will be equal to the initial kinetic energy. So remember, before the collision happens, we have two objects that are moving, right? So they're gonna have independent kinetic energy. So I, should, I could say that the kinetic energy initially would be equal to the kinetic energy of the football, which is object one, plus the kinetic energy of object two, which is the football player, 
right? And now that should be, I'll put it in brackets, we don't really need it, but it's going to be then minus the final kinetic energy. And remember the final uh, uh, value in this case, right, or the final, I should say, situation is where the football is stuck to the player. So I would say that the, I'm just going to leave it as kinetic energy final. Just remember that the mass in there will be the combined mass. So let's now calculate, or not calculate yet. Let's now start expanding the formulas. So the kinetic energy loss would be equal to one half, right, times the mass of the first object multiplied by the first object's velocity squared, plus one half times the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of the second object squared, Minus then one half, and I could put that in brackets if I wanted to, minus one half of the mass, the total mass that is, right, multiplied by the final velocity squared. So now we can just plug everything in. So the kinetic energy loss will be equal to one half times the mass of the football, which was 0 0.410, times the velocity of the football, uh, 25 meters per second squared, plus one half times the mass of the football player, 110 kilograms, multiplied by the velocity, eight squared, right? Then minus, and close up those brackets if you want, minus then one half times the mass total. So remember the mass total will be the 110. I gotta, I'm running out of space here a little bit, so it's gonna be 110 plus. You know what I'm gonna do? Do a little magic here. I'm running out of space, so let me just move all the work. There we go. So, Let's do, so it's going to be 110, right, plus, I'm still going to run out of space. <laughs> I'm going to do it vertically, sorry here. Sorry, guys. So 110 plus the 0 0.410. And then, right, the velocity finally that we found over here was 8.06. So this was 8.06, and that was squared. So now all we have to do is just plug it all in. Kinetic energy lost. Let's do it. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.41 times 25 squared plus uh, 0.5 times 110 times 8 squared. And then subtract from that 0 0.5 times parenthesis now 110 plus 0 0.41. Close those parentheses times then 8.06 squared. And we get a value of about 61.8. Right, so 61.8, and that is in terms of joules, okay? So that is the kinetic energy loss in the process. And now for part C, well, it says repeat parts A and B. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> for the situation in which the ball and the player are going in opposite directions, so might the loss of kinetic energy be related to how much it hurts to catch the pass? So I'm not going to write it all out because the equations are still the same. The only difference is now they're moving in opposite directions. So let's just take, for example, instead of the, um, instead of the uh, football player moving to the right, let's just say he or she is moving to the left. So what will change? The only thing that will change is the velocity sign. Okay, that's it. So literally, let's go down in part of letter A here. The only difference here is now this value here is going to be negative, okay, in terms of the velocity. So let's just calculate that quickly. I'm just going to throw it into the calculator. Let me actually do, I'm going to write over here part C, <clears throat> and this is part A of part C. So we have 0.41 times 25 plus 110 times a negative 8, and then divide that now by 110 plus 0.41. So here we get now a uh, velocity, final velocity now is going to be a negative, negative 7.88 or so. Right, considering rounding meters per second. So that looks beautiful. And then uh, what value is now going to change in terms of um, my kinetic energy lost formula over here. So now let me use a different color so you can find it. I'm going to use red. So the, uh, the mass of the football is still the same and the velocity of the football is still the same. The mass of the player is the same, but the velocity now has changed. So that value would be negative, but realize it's going to be squared. So it really doesn't matter. We don't even have to change that necessarily. The final mass of the system is going to be the same, but now this final velocity has changed, right? Where it is now negative 7.88. Let me give myself a little more room, negative 7.88, and that'll all be squared, okay? So now let's just redo the calculations with those numbers. 
do the letter B on over over here. So let's just throw it on in. So we get 0 0.5 times 0 0.41 times 25 squared uh, plus 0 0.5 times 110 times negative 8 squared. You can just type in 8 squared and you'd be fine, all right, instead of adding more parentheses. And then subtract from that now 0 0.5 times in parentheses 110 plus point. Uh, 0.41, which is obviously 110.41, um, and then close those parentheses, then multiply that by 7.88 uh, 7 squared. I know it's negative, but remember you're going to square it, so it's going to cancel the sign that is. So now the kinetic energy lost here, so the kinetic energy, whoops, the kinetic energy lost will be equal to now 220, 220. All right, joules, 220 joules. Okay, so then it says, you know, does this, should does it relate to how much it hurts? And yeah, it definitely should, right? You get, the, you get these two objects um, moving in opposite directions now over here. And uh, the, the collision essentially, right, is going to hurt a little more. Um, and how would that be experienced? Well, the, the added... You know, energy is probably going to be produced in sound and in terms of vibration into the player's body. Uh, but yes, it, it should be related. Uh, so the object's moving in opposite directions here. There's more kinetic energy that's lost. And therefore, remember the first law of thermodynamics says energy can't be created or destroyed. It's just transferred. So where does this go? It goes in a couple of places, probably a little heat, probably a little sound, and probably a little vibration in terms of pain. All right. So guys, and pressure and all that stuff. So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next question. Have a great day.